everyone and welcome back to some more Warhammer Underworlds for the channel and we have another new warband on the table today right after uh, seeing a new one last time and they're back as well but this time around it is the Exiled Dead versus the Storm of Celestis so the snipers against a zombie horde that actually acts like a zombie horde they've got some weird mechanics I think they've got a bit of a reputation for being terrible but we'll certainly see how they do today let's go look at the specifics so here is the zombie horde the exiled dead full seven miniatures so they'll be taking up every starting slot on the table they're being led by i think it's an exiled vampire hence the name of the warband his name is dientalos the exile this is the tall lad with the staff right there his second command in command is called prentice markov it's this little green it's kind of like his igor i guess uh Markov dabbles in necromancy, traditional necromancy, so he's got Regulus, which is this knight-looking zombie here. That's his particular partner in crime. The other four miscellaneous zombies over here, they're the ones that Deantelos has experimented on using something called the Arc Force. It's essentially Frankenstein's monster. He's using like electrodes and electricity to animate dead flesh. So they do have names, but they're all essentially the same. Uh, we have, let's see here, the lady with the knife is Ion. Oh, they all have pun names as well. We have, as in like, well, I think it's pronounced Ione, but obviously it's like Ion. And then we have, over here with the big hand, we have Coil, but it's spelt weird. Then at the back there, we have Bolt, as in Cobalt, I presume. And then Vlash, right back here. The other interesting mechanic for this group is all the undead reanimated flesh, so those four plus the knight there, they start the game inspired. They can get brought back via raise counter mechanics, kind of similar to the Sepulchral Guard. When they come back, they uninspire, so they start at their strongest and get weaker as the flesh keeps on getting reanimated. For Markov to inspire, his pet zombie has to make a successful attack. For Dientelos to inspire, a friendly minion has to kill someone. So... That's it. The other big mechanic is how Deantelos can kind of do the Sepulchral Warden type stuff where he activates but he's actually activating everybody else. He can activate everybody who has the keyword conductive, which is those four zombies, and make them all do one action in one round. So one action of a round, rather. He can activate four people and they can do a move or an attack. They can't do super actions, um, but that does mean he can kind of hoard them around and he needs to because they're very weak. They've all got two health. They're all rolling like two dice looking for swords. They don't have a good chance to hit on their own, but it's kind of like the law of large numbers. The more dice you're rolling, eventually they're going to come up. So we'll see how they do. And here are the Storm of Celestia. So I was just thinking of the old adage about Terminators in Warhammer 40k. Like the way you kill a Terminator is you make them roll dice because sooner or later they will roll a one or two ones these days, I think. But either way... That's what's going to apply there, I think. Anyway, we saw the Storm of Celestis make their debut last time. They love to sit on objectives and snipe. They inspire if they successfully land their snipe. And they can only fire their giant great bows once per entire round. Although they're pretty good in close combat as well, actually, as we saw last time. They're going to have a harder time this time, because if they get swarmed, it's going to be very difficult for them to get to the objectives that they need for their cards. But they shouldn't have much trouble killing the zombies. So... Who knows? We'll get both sides set up, see who's getting uh, priority, and be back with all that done after this quick word from my channel sponsor. This video is sponsored by Noble Knight Games. Check out the video description below for an affiliate link that will take you through to their store, and it will help me out as well. Thanks. On this dank and dreary day, we are back with everything set up and good to go, and it will be the Exiled Dead going first. As I said, before they fill up every potential starting location, uh, the two of them matter though. Deantelos is right here, and Markov is down here with his personal zombie, and the other miscellaneous electrical zombies are just on the other spots. And you can see where the Storm of Celestis is. I forgot to go over their names again, but we have Draken Celestis right there. We have Aphis the Brave up there next to their loyal Griffhound Sleek. And then we have Millicent down there, bottom right. So, to show you where the objectives are, Objectives 5, 2 and 1 are all over here for the Exiled Dead. And then come around this side of the camera to flip over 3 and 2. I mean it's 3 and 4 rather, I can count. 3 and 4 for Team Celestis. So with that let's jump into round 1, Exiled Dead going first and see what this zombie horde can do. 
already a lot happening after just one activation. First activation for the Exile Dead was Deantilus himself. He used a special action on his card called Dance Dynamic. That is the one where you can either move or attack with everyone who has a conductive keyword, which is all his four electrical zombies. As part of that rule as well, if one or more of them was dead, you can actually bring one of them back as well. But we'll cover that when it happens, and I'm sure it will. So all of them did moves. The zombies can move up to three hexes. Uh, the lady with the knife here just moved on to objective two because they know uh, Celeste this is all about objective setting, so they're going to make it more difficult for them. On that note, the one down here with the big club got on to objective three in enemy territory, and these two here just moved together to have a little bit of a united front. But you'll notice that Deantilus has been rolling some magic dice. He's a level two wizard, and he also has damage on him. Necrotic Curse was played in the power phase. So you're looking for lightning bolts, of which he got two. If cast, choose one enemy fighter within four hexes, deal one damage to them, stagger them, and then deal one damage to yourself. So he did exactly that into Aphis the Brave, who was four hexes away, one, two, three, four. So he's had one damage of his four health, been staggered. Deantilus has taken one damage as a result as well. Uh, puts him a little bit at risk, but he can't get one shot by any of them, so... We'll see what they can do with their first action. In the power phase, though, uh, Swift Step was played by Storm of Celestis. Choose one friendly fighter, push them one hex, or push them two hexes if it was Sleek the Griffhound. It was not, however. It was Celestis himself who has pushed himself up one hex onto Objective 4. First action for Storm of Celestis was Draken Celestis himself. Now moved on to Objective 4, he wants to sit there, so he cracked out that gigantic great bow of his, and shot into the closest zombie, I think that is Bolt and Zombie. Two dice looking for hammers, he got one, but the zombie, I guess he saw the gigantic person sized arrow coming because he successfully dodged it, so no damage there, and Draken can't fire that crossbow again this round. In the power phase though, they are playing a card, they are playing a distracting shot. This is just to try and give them some leeway for the next activation for the Exile Dead. Play this only in your power step, minus one die from enemy fighter attack actions in the next activation to a minimum of one, just in case any attacks are coming their way. The Antelos activated again as the second action for the Exile Dead, this time doing a charge just to get behind a couple of his zombies. Not that that will save him from long range shots, but it will give him support up close. And then he did his basic attack action, which is a, well, it's a spell attack action. So presumably that means that Distracting Shot does not reduce its dice because it just says attack, not spell attack. If that's wrong, apologies. But roll equal to his wizard level, which is two. It's draining coil, he's looking for lightning bolts and it staggers, but he was hitting someone with stagger anyway. And he's good at rolling double lightning bolts, which I guess is very thematic. Uh, he did it into Aphis, who did successfully roll one defense die against it, but needed two. So the one damage it does gets through. He was already staggered though, so nothing else to speak of. And nothing played in the power phase by either side. Well, Aphis had quite enough of that apparently. He activated and just loosed his great arrow out for the turn. This time getting two successes, so he's doing better than his boss. Again, a successful roll from the zombie, but he needed two, and they only have two health, so that zombie, bang, through the head, dead. That bolt gone for one glory, which is also being spent to give Celestis the Strength of Sigma upgrade. We saw this last time they were on the table. Plus one damage to his range one attack actions, so his butt with the end of the rifle is now doing three damage, which is really good. Uh, so yeah, that, there's that. Nothing being played in the power phase, no additional cards scored on that either, but it does mean that Aphis is inspired now. Markov activated and used a special action on his card called Puppeteer. It lets him and Regulus, his pet zombie, do one action each. They both opted to do move actions. Regulus moved three hexes, well, uh, yeah, because he started down here, so one, two, three. Yep, he moved all three. Over there, Markov only moved two just to sit on objective five, again, just because they're trying to deny potential scoring for Celestis because they're after objectives usually. Man, these zombies are really good at rolling their defense dice. Melison activated as the second last activation for the Celestis, fired her great bow for the turn. One success, one block from a zombie with a great club. I, I choose to believe he batted it out of the air somehow and the club didn't shatter, just in some cool fashion. And final activation of the first round for the Exile Dead, Deantilos activated again and used Dance Dynamic, which means he can move all the conductor people, make them do an action. He made a couple of them move again. Uh, this one is just staying still, and as part of that action as well, he can bring back one dead conductive minion. So Bolt that died is back. You place him adjacent 
but he has to be at least two X's away from an enemy and he is now uninspired so he's actually weaker but he came back right here next to Deantelos. And unable to engage at range since they all fired a great bow already this round. Melison activated as the final activation for Storm of Celestis. Didn't move, didn't bother putting down the token because it's the end of the round. On to objective 3 which just got freed up when that zombie went running up there. Technically Sleek could have activated, done a charge, maybe bitten a zombie, but he only does one damage. Uh, so he wouldn't have been able to kill one of them. So opted to just try and claim some objectives it looks like. So that takes us to the end phase. In the end phase of round one, the Storm of Celestis are scoring no additional cards, so they're just ending on that one they earned from the zombie kill. The Exile Dead are getting on the scoreboard though, they're actually scoring a couple of objective cards. The Dead Unbound for one glory right here, which is hopefully in focus. Score this in the end phase, if one or more surviving friendly conductive minions are uninspired. Bolt came back and that means he uninspired, so that scores for one. They're also scoring Force Dynamic for one as well. Scorbus in the end phase, if one or more friendly fighters each have two or more move tokens. Two of them have two or more move tokens, so that takes them to two. So as we go into round two, the XL Dead are winning, but only by a single glory point. As we start round two, it is the Storm of Celestis that has won the roll off, so they'll be activating someone first. Round 2 did not get off to a good start for the Storm of Celestis as the recently inspired Aphis activated and shot his great bow bolt. He was planning something because he aimed for bolt again even though he's you know, the zombie that's already been brought back and no defense roll was required because he rolled a support and a double support so he whiffed something proper. Must be all that zombie guts in his eyes I suppose and it's going to bite him, pardon the almost pun again in a different manner because Sudden Lurch is being played in the power phase by the Exile Dead. Um, the Storm of Celestis aren't playing anything. Play this during an enemy fighter's attack action, as long as Markov's alive. After the attack roll, push a friendly Regulus, or Regulus up to three hexes so he is adjacent to the attacker. And would you look at that? One, two, he's adjacent to the attacker. So now, Aphis is in great danger because Regulus can do two damage. Oh, and before we move on, both unspent glory earned in the end phase of round one were spent in that power phase by the Exile Dead. Regulus was given Unfaltering Guard, a unique one for just him, and it just means if an enemy fighter is adjacent and makes an attack action, it has to be against him. But if he gets taken out, it breaks, so even if he gets brought back, he doesn't have this upgrade, it gets, goes away. And Powered Command is being given to Dientalos. It gives him access to a reaction he can do. After an attack action, they took a friendly conductive minion out of action, so that's one of his four electrical zombies. Place it in a hex adjacent to the attacker, then give that fighter one raise counter, then break this card. So it's a free bring the zombie back immediately, as opposed to having to waste an action. And then the card also goes away. So pretty good though, though. So Markov was the first to activate for the Exile Dead in round two, and he used his puppeteer thing, so he and Regulus get to do one thing each. He did a movement action to just get in the cluster up here. Regulus did an attack action into Aphis. Needing hammers on two dice, he got one success, and Aphis just continued his streak of not rolling anything productive at all, and didn't block it, so he took two damage. It is worth noting if Aphis was on an objective hex, on his inspired side he gets to re-roll a defense die, but he isn't on one currently, so he is out of there, and that is one glory. It also means that Markov inspires, because Regulus did a successful attack action. Uh, his inspired side doesn't really change much, I think. He gets Gre oh no, he already had Grievous on his attack. I'm actually not sure what changes. Oh, he does plus one more damage, so that's about it. And he still has the Puppeteer special rule as well. And that gives them their third glory for that kill in Aphis. Second activation for the Storm of Celestis was Millicent who did the charge action. She moved from objective 3 to objective 5 here. Then launched her Great Bow Bolt at the zombie that survived in the first round. Getting a crit and a success. He actually rolled a success again on his defense side. I don't know what it is about these zombies. But they can't stop rolling shields which is what all of them need on their defense in fact, the only exception is Markov. The rest of them are literally all defense. So that still wasn't good enough to block the crit, however. That's two damage, and that means that this is um, Vlash. Vlash is out of there, so that is one glory gained for the kill there. And it also means that Melison inspires, and that means that she gets plus one die to her attack actions if she's on an objective on her flipped side, I believe. 
Set connection for the exile dead was the antelope who just stood there menacingly and did dance macabre again, or what was it called? Dance dynamic, sorry. And a couple of his zombies have moved up to surround Sleek, or at least attempt to. Um, the other one that was on his side here moved up to set objective one and just kind of protect him. And as part of that command, the uh, the recently killed Vlash came back. He didn't use the powered command. Reactions are optional, just to be clear. And he knew that's what he was going to do, so there was no need to use the reaction at this point. It's better served in a activation where you're not going to use Dance Dynamic to bring a zombie back that just died via that, since it's all part of the Dance Dynamic anyway. So he still has that that he can use as a trump card later on. Sleek was up for the Storm of Celestis and actually ended up being the most effective member of the team so far in terms of successful dice roll. He did a charge action right into the midst of the enemy. He is surrounded and he attacked Deantelos directly. Incidentally, I forgot to mention when um, Regulus killed Aphids, Deantelos did actually inspire because it's just a minion has to successfully kill someone, not a conductive minion. So his inspire condition had already been met. He doesn't gain more health or anything, but just mentioning that as a matter of note, he is inspired. So, Sleek, he was looking for swords on three dice. He got two swords and a crit. Deantelos was looking for shields, but that doesn't protect. It only does one damage, but it does also meet Sleek's Inspire condition, so Sleek has also Inspired. And in the power phase, that uh, glory they got from killing the zombie just prior is being spent to give Stoic Fortitude to Celestis himself, and that just means he has plus one wound, so he has uh, five health in total now. Markov was the second to activate, or second last to activate, sorry, for the Exiled Dead used Puppeteer and he and Regulus being both next to Sleek just did attack actions because it's one or other they can't do super actions. The rolls are there and they were both fantastic. Markov rolled two crits, Regulus rolled a crit and a support which is also a success in this instance. There's the defense rolls. Sleek got obliterated off the table into just a fine paste on the floor that the zombies are going to eat. That scores one for the kill but also scores a second for alternating strikes. Scorvus immediately after an activation step in which two or more friendly fighters each made one or more attack actions. So it doesn't need to be the zombie horde, it doesn't say we conductive minions, it's just any friendly fighters doing two or more attacks. So that counts and that puts them at four playing two. So last activation of round two for the Storm of Celestis was Draken Celestis himself. He fired his great arrow, he hasn't fired it yet, and he fired it into Markov. And he rolled a success and a crit. Markov gets two defense dice. He also rolled a crit, so those cancel each other out. But, as previously stated, he's the one model for the Exiled Dead that is looking for dodges, not shields. So unfortunately, that does nothing. And the attack got through to him, hitting him for two of his three health. It also means that the Draken Celestis is now inspired. But that is their round over. A bit of a nothing burger final activation of round 2 for the Exiled Dead. Markov activated, used Puppeteer. He did a movement action to retreat a little bit up here and he sent Regulus in to fight Celestis next round. So they are squaring up down there. And that takes us to the end phase of the midpoint of the match. Not much to speak of in the end phase for round 2. The Exiled Dead are scoring nothing so they're ending on the 5 they have earned so far. But the Storm of Celestis are scoring Here We Stand for one glory. It's simply for having two objectives held in the end phase. So that takes them to three. So they're still trailing by a couple and they're down a couple of members as we go into the third and final round. Can they withstand the horde? As we begin the third and final round, it is the Exile Dead who have one priority and will be taking the first activation. So the third and final round got started with Deantelos activating and doing another dance dynamic to spread the horde out and get them going after the two surviving members of Storm of Celestis. So we've got a couple of them down here, they just move actions. The lady with the knife did a move action in front of Deantelos here and the other one went over to help out Regulus against Celestis himself. In the power phase, one unspent glory is being spent to give Markov Prison of Grief, it gives him access to a reaction spell that you can see here, assuming he lives long enough to get the chance to use it. It's a reaction, use it after enemy fighter's activation. If he's within three hexes, you can try and cast to stagger him. So we'll see if that works out for him or not, as the case may be. Etheric Channeling was played by the Storm of Celestis. The next three plus attack action made in the activation that's about to happen can either have one extra die, cleave, or ensnare, which might be important. Poor Markov or potentially someone else. Let's see. 
Well, that was a bit unexpected, but there shall be no more dense dynamic because Melison did what needed to be done. She activated it for the first action of the round, did a charge and went point blank into Dent Deantelos right there. Still used her great arrow attack though, which is up to range three and two dice, but she also take an extra die from Aetheric channeling. The only success she got was a crit, but that was enough. He only rolls one defense die even when inspired and rolled bupkis. That is two damage. He had two damage on him already, one of which was self-inflicted. And that is him out of there for one glory. And more importantly, no more activating the horde simultaneously, which could be crucial. Now, she ended the activation and did all that within three of Markov. So he took advantage of that spell he just uh, equipped. And he did roll what was needed to cast it. So she's been staggered, which might be problematic for her later on. In the power step... Stalwart defense was played. This is to add a little bit of survivability to the two left. Play this only in your power set. Plus one defense to the each friendly fire holding an objective in the next activation. That's only going to be Celestis because Melison is not currently on one. But they are getting an upgrade. One glory is being spent to give them cool head, which is a unique one for Melison, And it just means you can reroll this fighter's attack rolls, which is pretty good. The de facto leader of the Exile Dead, Markov, activated, used puppetry. He did a movement action to go hide in the corner since he knows Melison can't fire a great bow again this round. And she's already charged. Oh, on that note, where's our charge token gone? There we are, that should be there. And uh, Regulus decided to abandon trying to fight Celestis when he's sitting on an objective and has five health, etc. He did a movement action to get adjacent to Melison to potentially do more later in the round because that's everybody on the surviving Exile's Dead side. Uh, having a move token. A bit of a whiff from Celestis followed. He did a charge down to objective three, fired his great arrow into one of the conductive zombie services, Vlash, the, uh, sorry, Coil rather, and rolled one success. And again, these zombies just rolling shields. He blocked the arrow, or I guess he maybe got hit by it and he just didn't stay dead. Turns out the zombies aren't the only ones who can roll successful shields today, apparently. Regulus activated and just did an attack action into Melison. Got one success, he could have had supports and everything, but the other one was swords. And she fully blocked it on a shield as well. So no damage through and nothing played by either side in the power phase. With both surviving members of the Storm of Celestis having charge tokens and already having fired their great arrows, they don't really have many options. Melison activated and did a move action onto objective two right there and did nothing else. And the last action of the game for the Exile Dead was to cycle an objective card. Discarded one. The one they discarded, you can actually kind of see it top left there. It would have been scored if Regulus had been brought back after being killed, but he got ignored. So that ain't scoring. So a new one has been drawn and that one got discarded. And that is the Exile Dead's game over, barring scoring in the end phase. And the final activation for Celestis was the man himself doing a movement action back onto objective four, which raised an interesting quandary because they were going for the objective card balanced strategy which is after an opponent's activation if your warband holds objectives two and four you score it for two there is no more enemy activations that's the game over so presumably this can't score and in the end state of the final round this has no opportunity so we'll see if it matters if this two points make a difference it probably won't but just keep that in mind that this doesn't seem like it can score because there's no other enemy activations to happen despite him moving there. But there wasn't anything else for him to do anyway because he's already fired his great arrow. So let's go to the end phase. So barring that balanced strategy that we just discussed, both sides actually did pretty well in the end phase of the final round. Strict Tutor and Forbidden Lore are both scoring for the Exile Dead. Both are worth one. Score was in the end phase of a friendly Markov cast one or more spells. He did. He was given that Prison of Grief and it went off successfully once. And Forbidden Lord just means everybody has a charge or a move token. And every surviving friendly fire did. So the Exiled Dead are ending their game on 2, 4, 6, 7. Over here, a couple of cards are scoring for the Storm of Celestis. Lightning Strike for the leader being dead is worth 1 to them. And Bulwark Against the Dark is also scoring and that's worth one, and that's just every surviving friendly fighter has at least one upgrade, which they do. Which brings their final score to six, which means they, they lost by one. So, if this would have scored, they would have won, basically. They would have won by a single point, because one point would make them even. But, 
it's a surge objective. There were no enemy activations left, so I think it is correct that there was no opportunity for this to score. So on a technicality, the Exile did win. So in their first showing, the Zombie Horde has been successful with a little bit of an asterisk because it just came down to them happening to have first activation this round, I guess. But they did win. Um, definitely should have kept Deantelos further back because, yeah, if he goes down... If he'd gone down earlier, they would just fall apart. You need him alive to constantly be doing dance dynamics so that you can activate these weak zombies to do multiple things per activation. Although, on that note, we saw today also what happens if the Storm of Celestes don't land every great bow hit. So they kind of suffer a little bit as uh, poor Aphis displayed because he just got wrecked. He missed every shot and then died. So that's what happens with them if, if the dice don't play fair. Speaking of the dice not playing fair, how many times did the zombies live on a single roll of a defense die and getting a shield? Oh, now they're not rolling shields. That's a crit's better than a shield, but still. None of them rolled a shield that time, and yet shields were just constantly being rolled. So, had those not been happening, more zombies would have died, which in turn would have given up more glory, brought them back weaker once they got raised, because they uninspire. So, who knows how it would have went had that happened, but the dice were definitely on their side that time, uh, for sure. And it's hard to judge fully, but it seemed interesting enough. They, they don't seem super strong, for sure, but that's fine. I like the horde mechanic, that seems pretty neat. But we'll see them again in the future and see how they do against a different warband. Thank you very much for watching. Either way, I sincerely hope you enjoyed. Please do remember to show your support, liking, commenting, or subscribing. Or if you can go above and beyond to support the channel in general, I'd really appreciate if you became a channel member. Or check out the channel sponsor. Um, they carry Warhammer products, so if you're in America, you can pick them up, or you can press the thanks button as well. Either way, enjoy the rest of your day, and see you next time. Ta-ta for now.